Ukrainian drone crews successfully neutralize Russian military motorcycles. The video, shot by a Ukrainian drone unit, shows one of the Russian military's armored assault motorcycles with crude camouflage around its welded-on anti-drone protection. According to Forbes, it wasn't quite the two-wheeled equivalent of Russia's lumbering metal-framed turtle tanks, but it was close and almost certainly had all the same disadvantages as turtle tanks, poor mobility and visibility. Once a Ukrainian drone spotted a boxy, camouflaged motorcycle riding blithely down a dirt road in broad daylight, the outcome was all but predetermined. An explosive drone with a first-person view of the Ukrainian strike force Apache FPV chased a motorcycle and blew it up. The rider or riders may not have seen the approaching drone. It's quite difficult to see through the bulky metal cages that Russian crews are welding onto new combat motorcycles in a desperate attempt to protect them from FPV drones. Probably even more difficult when those cages are wrapped in camouflage, writes the analyst. Having lost huge amounts of armored vehicles in Ukraine, the Russian military was desperate for vehicles and began buying up expensive Chinese golf carts as well as Chinese and Belarusian dirt bikes. Soldiers have ridden light four-wheeled and even lighter two-wheelers since at least the First World War. A hundred years later, the Russian military, increasingly short of transportation options, revived the idea, but only because it had little other choice. The idea was for the motorized troops to approach the Ukrainian positions faster than the Ukrainians could react. Once within range of a small arms fire, the motorcyclist would dismount and begin to fight. In practice, the motorcycles were neither small enough to evade detection by Ukrainian surveillance drones nor fast enough to evade explosive FPV drones. When Russian motorcyclists attacked positions occupied by the Ukrainian 79th Air Assault Brigade early last month, the Russians were kicked in the teeth by drones, the brigade said. A few weeks after the first motorcycle squads went into battle, some of the survivors began installing anti-drone cages on their vehicles, essentially copying the practice that turned some Russian tanks into heavily armored turtle tanks. The Russians appear to be compounding their mistake by adding camouflage to the frame armor of some motorcycles, which reduces visibility for riders as well as their mobility. Worse, the camouflage is poorly designed, as it is on a Russian military motorcycle hit by an Apache FPV strike drone, in fact, actually emphasized the square shape of the motorcycle frame, making the motorcycle stand out in the landscape rather than blend into it, the article notes. The Ukrainian Defense Forces successfully counterattacked and recaptured the village of Kalinovka, north of Chesov Yar, from Russian forces. Build analyst Julian Rop reports this. The analysis notes that the Russian army is using double-strike tactics when advancing on Chesov Yar, west of Bakhmut. The Russian armed forces directly attack the Canal Microdistrict in the east of the city, and also bypass it from the flanks. Build recalls that at the end of April, the Russian occupiers advanced in the south and reached the Seversky Donetsk Donbass Canal. In the north, they recently captured the village of Kalinovka and also reached the canal. At the same time, the canal microdistrict was completely destroyed, but remains in the hands of Ukrainian defenders. However, as Bild writes, recently the Ukrainian armed forces successfully counterattacked and recaptured Kalinovka. Ukrainian troops recaptured most of Kalinovka and pushed the Russian occupiers away from the canal at Chesov Yar, the statement said. Russia recently deployed thermobaric grenade launchers to Chesov Yar, but despite heavy shelling, the Ukrainian military launched a counterattack. The occupiers thought that they would quickly capture the city and it would be easy prey for them, but instead they fell into a trap. Now heavy battles of attrition continue in our Yar. Military expert Mikhail Zyrakov noted that now more attention is paid to the situation in the Kharkov region, despite the fact that the situation in the Donetsk region requires specific actions. He noted that near the city of Chesov Yar, 
The invaders already have a bridgehead on the right bank of the Seversky Donets, Donbass Canal and are crossing it very powerfully. The expert believes that these are unpleasant bells for Ukraine, which may indicate an acceleration of the retreat of the Ukrainian armed forces.